Ben, thank you so much for joining me today. First, I want to get your reaction to this news about British Columbia's uh, and I guess the federal government's uh, plan to decriminalize hard drugs. What's your reaction? Well, it's a start. Um, we've had a century long experiment with drug prohibition, with criminalizing people who use drugs, with trying to um, threaten or punish them with stopping using drugs. It's been a very costly, catastrophic disaster uh, across North America and around the world. Um, the war on drugs has been going on for decades, and it has only made things worse. Um, that's what the evidence shows us. It's actually led to increased availability and increased potency of drugs. That's on the supply side. And on the demand side, we know that incarcerating people who have substance use disorders uh, directly contributes to their death. Uh, research shows that you're 50 times more likely when you're forced to go through a detox in prison, essentially, because this is a medical condition. It's a chronic relapsing condition. And so uh, I don't believe prison should be a death sentence for someone who has a substance use disorder. And we need to have policy based on compassion and evidence. So there's been some criticism of this move on, on multi multiple fronts. First, let's address the criticism that the 2 five gram threshold is still too low, uh, that, that this will continue to result in criminalization of many people who are addicted to drugs and often carry amounts of drugs greater than that quantity. Right. So we really do need to listen to uh, people who are using substances. And they uh, there's a drug policy coalition that made a recommendation for a certain threshold that was higher than that. The BC government uh, uh, lowered that asked for that, and then the federal government approved something even lower. So what we have is a threshold that, that we're being told by people who use drugs is too low. Uh, They're using for their personal use. Now, the risk is this thing could backfire big time if you set it too low. What happened when uh, the global war on drugs got really good at seizing hundreds of tons of heroin as organized crime doesn't just pack up their bag and go home, they created fentanyl and carfentanil, which are synthetic drugs, which are 50 to 100 times more powerful than heroin, naturally occurring heroin. And so the problem is if you say you can only have this quantity of drugs, that increases the incentive for even more potent drugs. So if you could have that much you know, fentanyl, well, uh, now I can't have that much fentanyl, I can only have half that quantity, so then we'll mix some car fentanyl in, which people see in Jurassic World, that's what they use to sedate a T-Rex in that movie. And in real life, it's used to sedate uh, elephants and rhinoceroses. And it's found in autopsy reports of people who have overdosed and died. So we don't want to get this wrong. We've got to either go towards a path of compassion and understanding and supporting people to stay alive. Um, the alternative is to roll the dice with toxic street drugs. And uh, that has, has been a, a total disaster in Canada and the U.S. I want to ask about how much this is actually going to change. I mean, it's no secret that there has been open drug use on the streets of the downtown east side for years, and that has been increasing. Is this actually going to change much, given that it's questionable how much enforcement was actually taking place in the first place? Yeah, so what the police were doing is even if they were not charging and there were still charges that are happening or is threatened, they would seize drugs, drugs and crush them under their feet. There's also ongoing harassment of people who have uh, who are on the street. We had a case this week in BC Supreme Court, a judge threw out a case because the police said search someone unconstitutionally. They, they said the reason was the person looked scruffy and gaunt. Basically, they looked like a drug user and that was the grounds to do a strip search on them. So this is the kind of enforcement that we've seen. Um, what the research shows is criminalization contributes to a couple of things. So even just the fact that it is still illegal um, means that people are more likely to use their drugs alone because they don't want others around who could you know, report on them perhaps, or um, be in breach of conditions like they not use drugs if they're on release. And it encourages them to use faster. So just because the VPD has, a, has had a policy of not actively prosecuting small amounts for simple possession, um, people would still actively use those outside of, you know, police vision and sight and things like that. It also has implications for criminal records, employment. Right. There's there's the whole cascading uh, set right. of factors.